So in the first video, we rolled the six numbers that will go on to become our ability scores. And we'll be talking about that in a future video, not long from now. In this video, we're gonna talk about race and choosing a race. And we're gonna be going by the Dungeons and Dragons basic rules. And in this video, talking about the four, if you like, core races. So first one we're gonna kick off talking about is the dwarf. Now, in the Dungeons and Dragons basic rules, they're described as follows. Bold and hardy, dwarves are known as skilled warriors, miners and workers of stone and metal. Though they stand well under five feet tall, dwarves are so broad and compact that they can weigh as much as a human standing nearly two feet taller. Their courage and endurance are also easily a match for any of the larger folk. I love going on Google, and if you just put in dwarf D&D &D into Google, you'll get a multitude of illustrations that amazing artists over the years have, um, have put up online for us to look at. And you can find this really inspiring, you know, to get your creative juices flowing about ideas you might have if you want to play if you want to play a dwarf. Now bear in mind that Dungeons and Dragons, when they refer to each of these races, they are of course using generalizations, stereotypes if you like. The next race that you can choose from is the elf. With their unearthly grace and fine features, elves appear hauntingly beautiful to humans and members of many other races. They are slightly shorter than humans on average, ranging from well under five feet tall to just over six feet. They are more slender than humans, weighing only 100 to 145 pounds. Males and females are about the same height, and males are only marginally heavier than females. Now remember, these are just generalizations, stereotypes of the race. And so that is another race that you can choose to play in Dungeons and Dragons without spending any money on expanded rules or anything like that just using the Dungeons and Dragons basic rules you can get all of the options and all of the all of the rules you need to start playing an elf if you'd like the next race that we're going to look at is the halfling now, I went along to Google I put in halfling D&D &D, and it pulled up some some wonderful images of halflings. I'm going to read the opening paragraph or two from the Dungeons and Dragons basic rules to give you an idea of this of this race. Small and practical. The diminutive halflings uh, survive in a world full of larger creatures by avoiding notice or, barring that, avoiding offence. Standing about three feet tall, they appear relatively harmless and so have managed to survive for centuries in the shadow of empires and on the edges of wars and political strife. They're inclined to be stout, weighing between 40 and 45 pounds. A quick browse through Google when you put in halfling D&D &D into your browser will bring up plenty of ideas to whet your appetite if you want to play a halfling. And then finally, a race that we'll all be familiar with, because if you're watching this, you probably are, Human, <laughs> most of us anyway. Obviously I put human D&D &D into, into Google just to see some of the ideas that came up, some of the inspiration for this familiar race. Now obviously Dungeons and Dragons historically um, have always used the, the term race when I suppose if you wanted to, to really kind of be specific, a better word for all of these would be species or ancestry, those kind of things. But look, D&D &D used the term race. With their penchant for migration and conquest, humans are more physically diverse than other common races. There is no typical human. An individual can stand from five feet to a little over six feet tall and weigh from 125 to 250 pounds. Human skin shades range from nearly black to very pale, and hair colours from black to blonde, curly, kinky or straight. 
Males might sport facial hair that is sparse or thick. A lot of humans have a dash of non-human blood, revealing hints of elf, orc, or other lineages. Humans reach adulthood in their late teens and rarely live even a single century. Um, as opposed to the other races that we've mentioned so far, the dwarf, the elves, the halflings, all live much longer than humans do. Elves can average around 700 years, dwarves live up to about 400 years, and halflings, their lifespan surpasses humans as well. So if you're following along, you're probably already decided on a race that you would like to play for your character. So have that in mind, and with that in mind, each and every one of these races come with their own traits. And this includes increases to certain ability scores, Again, we'll be talking about these ability scores that we rolled in the previous video. We'll be talking about what we do with these numbers in a future video coming up really, really soon. And again, if you wanna read more specifically about each of these races to help you make your choice, go to every10day.com, click on D&D Basic Rules at the top of the page, you'll see it right there, and just click on that and it'll open it up for you. The D&D Official Basic Rules, these are completely free, from the guys at Wizards of the Coast. Thanks, Wizards of the Coast. And you can read all about race in chapter two, right here. It'll help you with choosing a race, take you through the racial traits, and it'll walk you through in more detail in the dwarf, the elf, the halfling, and the human. In the next video, we're gonna move on to talking about class.